Hey, I'm Lou Brutus. Our old friend Head joins me on the line. Belated happy 2021 to you. How are you? How are yours? You know what? I'm good and happy 2021 to you. Uh, we've, we've known each other a long time, so it's always yeah. good to talk to you. And uh, yeah, we're doing good, man. We're hanging in there. We're making the best out of the situation, trying to come up with new um, ideas in the music uh, business, but staying positive. You know, you, you're one of those guys, I think, that has uh, lasted and existed for so long because you're able to roll with the punches. What are some of the things, both in a, a music business sense and in, in a personal space that you've been able to learn the last year, um, you know, both as skills and both as just somebody trying to get through life? You know, I would say patience, definitely. And I've learned to focus. Now, all of these things I'll mention, I'm, I'm, I have not mastered, but I'm learning. Let's say I'm learning and I'm in process of learning. Patience and uh, just enjoying the moment, you know? There's a cool, very cool book that has sold millions of copies called The Power of Now. And it just focuses on like what you have right in front of you. You know, we all get, we all get lost in the past, you know, and we worry about the future. So it's so staying in the moment is the is the true thing that I've been focusing on in since 2020 and all the COVID stuff. And then whatever else, you know, with music, just kind of just to kind of uh, conversating with people, you know, you get together and you with the people you trust and you and whatever, everything in life, you know, the people you trust, you get together with and you come up with, you know, strategies on how to make life. Uh, keep going where you don't lose hope and you don't fall into depression or whatnot. So, you know, of most days I have conquered that, but uh, I've had some, you know, down days too, just like everybody else. You have new stuff that I want to talk about, but I, I'd, I'd like to work backwards first because when things struck, I think uh, corn was pretty close to getting uh, a tour done. I, th I think I was already seeing some of the pictures of the set and the rehearsals and, and things started to go south from there. So walk us back a year, take us through things for your music industry, your music business stuff, and, and bring us up to today. You know, we had a, we had a really exciting um, 2019 summer. We we went on tour with, I mean, one of the best bands that influenced so many, Alice in Chains, and uh, they're just crushing it since they've been on their comeback. And we've never played. We've played like a couple shows with them that I remember. You know, just with with me being in the band, there's only been a couple shows. So to go on a full tour with them was just amazing. We had our singles coming out for the Nothing record. We were uh, releasing videos and, and yeah, radio singles and whatnot. And, and so we were really pumped. The record comes out late 2019. And, um, and then we get one more tour into 2020. So thankful for the tour with Breaking Benjamin. We go out and tour and I, I gotta tell you, it, it came so close. We started hearing about the COVID uh, actually, we hit Washington when it started to outbreak, and and Washington was the first to get hit hard. And so uh, we were there around when that started. We finished March first, so we didn't have to shut down any shows. We finished our tour. We went home, and they locked down the country or whatever it was. So, you know the the quarantine stuff. So ever since then, we I just been at home. You know, uh, I've been playing it very safe. Uh, I have gotten together with the guys a couple times and, you know, we're strategizing with management and just working on some stuff and, you know, trying to do what every other band is doing, right. To keep busy, mm -hmm. to, to, to use the time wisely and to, you know, just come up with some, some cool plans. Quick aside, if I uh, may ask you to talk about somebody else, you, you mentioned the fun of going out with Allison Chains. Can you give us a bit of insight into what makes Jerry Cantrell so fucking good? <laughs> My gosh, you know what? It's just, he just has this thing on him, right? It's, it's, it's like he's got this, this amazing bluesy thing, but he also has like a killer melody and a darkness, a, a dark vibe to it. It's like dark bluesy uh, Jerry Cantrell sauce. I don't know what it is, but it works. <laughs> And uh, 
And it's, uh, you know, it's cool. He gave a, he brought me and Monkey at one of the last shows. He brought us his Cantrell uh, wah pedal, his signature one that he put out. So that was a dream come true. And, you know, James got to play with him. And then just recently we got to cover the song Wood for, you know, the special that they put on over in Seattle. And so just really cool to connect with those guys. Everybody in the band is like so kind. They're just kind to people, you know, and with with egos in, in the music industry, um, it's re really refreshing to see someone that has influenced so many people be so kind to everybody. And I don't know, it's just their breath of fresh air, honestly. Good stuff. Excellent. Now, then, um, if you can put into perspective the new love and death, I, th I think we're coming up on five years now since the uh, the last uh, round from the group. And I'm, I'm curious if this was something you had planned for about now or if things just kind of worked out with uh, with the downtime that you had not foreseen. Yeah, it's actually been about seven or eight years it ended up being, but we were, we were working on love and death every year since about 2014. You know, just a little bit every year, not, not like I've been working my butt off for six years on this. And it was, you know, get together with a producer and some of the other guys for, you know, a couple of days or a week in Nashville. And then, you know, one of the guys will work on his stuff and in, uh, in Phoenix the next year, a little bit more, we'd stay in contact and, but sometimes six months ago, go by, we wouldn't even talk, you know, it was just not a rush because corn was busy breaking. Benjamin was busy, which the, you know, one of the producers from breaking Benjamin, Jason Rao. Yeah. And so we we're just so busy that it was hard to, you know, we get off tour and it's family time. And so it's like, you know, how are we going to fit this in? And then me and Jason, we go on tour you know, last, right before COVID, that tour, we were thinking we were going to get a lot done. We got nothing done. We didn't work on anything because his schedule was like start to get ready and eat dinner around four because they go on a little earlier than us. You know, they're getting off stage. I'm getting ready for corn set. And then, you know, I'm, I'm winding down at 2 a.m. and he's in bed, you know. <laughs> so it just didn't work. And days off, we were in separate cities and whatnot. So, but the pandemic came, we had probably, I'm guessing we had like the full, a full record of material. And so we really dissected all the songs and we threw away about three songs. And those three, I think were mostly written by me. So I had to take a, a you know, a, a humble a piece of humble pie and uh, let my, my songs get kicked out. But guess what came out when I said, yes, let's kick out these songs. We got down. We got uh, the album opener, Tragedy, and we got uh, a song called Death of Us, which is really one of my favorites. So it, it worked out really good. Tell me a little bit more about your relationship with Jason. He's a he's a, a of course, a, a great player and producer and writer. He seems like a very interesting dude in my dealings with him. And he's certainly been a part of some really great rock acts through the years. Yeah, he's uh, he just came out as a young buck with the band Red. You know, he was. He was, he was really working on like his his personal music, but he's also really into engineering and producing. And so there was just a lot of talent in that band, that band Red. And I, I really loved their sound early on. And so I was just kind of like a fan of their music. And he had been a fan of Korn. And we, we linked up through Red's producer. And I actually was going to work with Red's producer. That didn't work out. And me and Jason ended up just working together. And he stepped up in the producer role. So that started around 2011. We were working on my solo stuff. We had a song called Paralyzed. And then we shifted over to the Love and Death thing. And he jumped on as producer then. And I know his I know his, his family really well. I've, I've watched his, his girls grow up, you know, they're – from, you know, I met his oldest daughter when she was just in a, in a high chair and she's like, you know, 11 years old or 12 or something right now. And so it's been, a, it's been a long time and he's just really talented. He knows how to bring, it's crazy. He's like, he got this double gift. He brings out like crazy riffs, awesome guitar riffs, and he'll take my ideas and make them so much better. But he also has this like emotional um, intellect 
with with musical notes and so he makes you feel and so that's what i feel like with the love and death this new stuff it really has a a, a cool emotional effect to it mixed with uh, the hard edge and he had a lot to do with that along with the other co-producer uh uh joe rickard if you would because you've worked with so many great folks uh you know behind the scenes of the stuff that you've uh you've done what is it that makes a good producer? What is it that they do that that sort of brings something out of uh, uh, an otherwise really good musician? You know what? Producers are so important to to music and to bands and all of the, everybody listening to this. All of your favorite bands would not sound anything like they do. They would be a crappier version of of what they sound like to you. I promise you. Because bands can't, you know, bands are just, they're usually great, you know, uh, performers. But as far as technically and, and crafting a song and an album, producers come in and they, I don't think they get enough credit to the fans. You know, they just do so much. I mean, from our early days with Ross Robinson, they'll take, they'll, they'll take your crap and make it really good. Or they'll, <laughs> or they'll come to you and they'll be like, listen, you know, I really think we should ixnay this song and, or, or we got we should get rid of this chorus. This is not on the level of the rest of the song. So they really hear things that uh, us musicians sometimes don't hear. And they take, I mean, just Ross Robinson, you know, he, he taught us the ropes because me and James, we knew how to play guitar. We knew how to write songs with corn, but, he just took us in and taught us studio work. He taught us guitar overdubbing. He taught us miking. He taught us all this stuff, you know. And from from that, we just we kind of took all the 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 gold that he gave us and and learned a lot on our own. But working with so many other great producers, Michael Beinhorn and uh, you know uh, Toby Wright and and Nick Raskalinix and so many others, but uh, just working with these producers they give each record a different vibe and sound and so yeah that's it a props to all the producers out there what is it that you're able to get out of a project like love and death that you don't get out of corn because you know corn has done a ton of of super interesting records and very different records um but you you always seem to have a thirst to uh to get some other stuff in there too yeah i, I you know what i do i, I love i love vocals i love collaborating and you know what happened i became friends with these other guys when i was outside of corn and i'm still a fan of jason's creativity and mm -hmm. jr who is a she i share vocals with him and guitar work with him and i've known the kid since he was 15 and now he's like 25 and killing it you know and i just you know what i like the emotional aspect of the music and the and and some of the pers personal lyrics and and just uh, the melody, I just love to do it. I think it gives me an outlet. I mean, we're in a pandemic and, and I, I've been busy, you know, I've been busy doing what I love, you know, getting together with the corn guys is my first love. Corn is my first everything. The love and death project is just, is something I love as well. That's uh, me and some other friends of mine. And uh, just like Jonathan did his solo record a couple years ago, that went really well. And I just, I, I love, I love doing it. I love to do some vocals and um, yeah, it's just another form. It's like, it's like doing another painting with some other artist or something, you know, if you're an artist like that, it's just fun to do. And life is so short. Why not, why not get together and be creative, you know? You uh, you've mentioned some of the other folks on the record. I I, I think you got a number of other very cool names that, that maybe you could name drop for us now because it's pretty impressive. Yeah, we got uh, it, it was really fun to put it together. I, I was talking to all these a, a lot of musicians about it because uh, I mean we've had some cool fans that uh, that have been fans of the Love and Death Project that in bands that I respect like the you know Disturbed and and uh, Jacoby Papa Roach and and Ben from Breaking Benjamin and, uh, you know, everyone, but who I really clicked with was Keith Wallen who plays guitar for Breaking Benjamin. He wrote a great deal on this record and I want to give props to him. 
he brought in the ideas for for tragedy and down and death of us and infamy and uh so working with him was amazing and bringing in Lacey Sturm I love Lacey's power and passion that girl she's so tiny but she just <laughs> gives it bro she is just a powerhouse I've known her for years I respect her and her and, and I'm great friends with her husband and her and to finally do something was amazing and she was just so into it. And so, yeah, we got, we got her on the record. And then we have Ryan Hayes who I have not even spoke to actually. Jason knows Ryan Hayes. I have never met him before and he killed it on white flag. You know, he's got a little part on white flag. And so, yeah, it was cool to have these guests on, on the record. And uh, I was going to do more, but just, you know, I thought I'd keep it simple with the, with the people that uh, were either working on the record or we've been talking about doing stuff like with Lacey for about seven years. I've been talking and we got to do something together. And we finally did. You know, and, and I, maybe I need to apologize because when you first mentioned her and her size, I laughed out loud. Uh, I, first of all, I was very excited when I saw her name um, uh, recently that she was going to be on the record. But also, I always kid people, she's no bigger than a hobbit. And yet she she howls like a banshee and you just can't believe that much sound can come out of a package that small. You know, she's very short in stature, but she stands very tall in life. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That voice is like a giant. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, she's but you know what the, the best thing about her? She's the best mom. Yeah. I mean, working with her and just seeing they go with their kids everywhere. They got this cool motor home and. They just, they're such a family vibe and the kids are running around writing the music, you know, right while they're doing music and whatnot. And it's, they are the best parents ever. Quick aside, I, and I'll probably have to repost it soon. One of my favorite pictures I ever had with an artist was uh, at Rockfest in Kadot, Wisconsin, uh, a few years back. And it's Lacey and I, and I don't even know what we were laughing about, but we were supposed to take a nice picture and we were busting up one another with jokes and it was just a, a a great moment yeah she's uh she's a fun lady and a a hell of a singer and yeah yeah it is a a very interesting family unit to watch uh around the country yeah and you know what's crazy she was just hanging out uh, not too long ago and uh we had a, a photographer around and it's the same thing i got all these pictures of me and her cracking up so she comes with yeah. a lot of joy too. She's, she's very happy. And so, yeah, props to you, Lacey. We love you. Um, one thing is we, we, we start to wrap up here. Um, how do you keep yourself fresh through the years? It's, it's certainly one of the hallmarks of, you know, all of the work with corn and, and all of the other stuff that you do. Um, while you always sound like yourself, you always sound like different versions of yourself, uh, which, which I think is good. You know, th there aren't many bands that can sound exactly the same on every record. Some people have right. done it's been good, but not a whole lot. How do you change and evolve and still stay true to one's uh, oneself? Man, you know what? I go in every project and whatnot, just kind of like, what are we going to do now? Because you, know? <laughs> you got this like, kind of pressure you know you're just like wow uh and then th one of the fears in my in my brain is what are we going to do that we haven't already done there it is you know that's the fear right there because you don't want to repeat yourself but you but you want to be familiar and so i just kind of focus in like me and the corn guys we we just kind of go in and jam you know, ever since I remember Monkey coming to my house when he was 14, I put Dawkin under lock and key on, played <laughs> Never Unchain the Night. Yeah. And he just watched me and he got in, he, he just got bit by the music bug. He, he ended up getting a guitar and buying my guitar off me. And we just got together and started jamming. And 50 year old dudes to this day, what we do when we do a new record and we just go in and start jamming. And we end up with a batch of songs and we have to end up throwing some songs away, you know, and keeping some. So that's all we do. And it ends up being so much fun. Still, I like, dude, my word for the year is grateful. 
and I'm just, it's like, over, it's like flowing out of me. I'm, um, I can't believe that I'm doing, I did two records in 2020 or, or, oh, sorry, I, I did like nine or 10 songs on love and death. I'm working on possibly two records in 2020. We're, we're hoping to get a lot of, of annou announcements coming with the corn camp and love and death show. We got the live stream. We have, it's so much going on that I'm just, I'm just grateful, man. I'm so grateful that I can still do this at 50 years old. 50 is the new, like 35, I think. And it still sounds like you have fun. It still sounds like you get up in the morning and you're like, I still enjoy doing this. I'm not burned out on this thing yet. Right. Yes. Yes. That's the key. Doing what we love, man. I mean, not not everybody has has a career that they love to do and get up and go to work every day. So, I mean, I know you have it too, Lou. You've been doing it so long, and we, being in the industry, we're we're very uh, just uh, fortunate to be able to do what we do. You know, grizzled veterans. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you now? How old am I? I'm 58. I'm doing this shit for 40 years now. I started as uh, actually more than that. I first got on the radio when I was like 14 or 15 years old. That's so, crazy. and I've always, and I've had, I've had multiple jobs uh, of one kind or another since I'm 12 years old, you know, so I've been going seven days a week for, you know, 46 years now, but you know, what else am I going to do? I mean, I get to do stuff that people would want to do and not get paid for, you know, like this is what I would want to do if I wasn't doing it, you know? So, uh, right. You know, yes. and, and it leads to all other, you know, I, I get to talk to interesting people like yourself and I get to listen to music and pick it apart and uh, in a good way. Uh, and I get to do photography and I get to, to travel usually, not, not so much lately, but uh, right. yeah, and it, it just makes getting up in the morning um, uh, fun. You know, actually, one last thing. Uh, I, I took a bit of an inspiration from you the last several years um I, I i still might have a beer every year or two um i know you one. had some, what's that one huh yeah one or two yeah that's about it i, I kind of lost interest in partying i really used to be very good at it me too <laughs> then we, I, we were the best <laughs> yeah but then i you know what was it that really turned the corner for you um to to sort of get yourself on on track man you know what it was I, I looked at my little darling little girl, five years old, and I look back at the mirror and I see nothing that could offer her anything good. And that, that it, it gave me a sadness like that uh, I wanted her to I wanted her I wanted to be somebody that she could look up to. And that person staring back at me at the mirror was not that person. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I tried like years and years to you know, my story's pretty, pretty out there. I, yeah. I tried years and years to, you know, to, to get off it. And, but I loved it too much. I was really good at it. Like you said, mm. and that's when, uh, you know, I just, I asked, uh, I asked for God's help, you know, the God of the universe to help me. And I, and I got better and, and, uh, I'm happy now. And now it's about music. My daughter's 22 years old. It's just crazy. It's crazy how life has gotten so much better. And uh, I tried drinking a few years ago and I still have that alcoholic. Like if, if I pop open one, I can't have two a year like you. I, I, I'll have two every 10 minutes mm. and for like the rest of the night. And then I'll be throwing up the next day. Something in me clicks and I can't stop. So. Yeah. And what I found and and I, I've, I've seen this as a common thread amongst folks like yourself that I, uh, I, I talk to, you know, musicians or or other people in the arts that uh, after a while, the diminishing returns on the partying uh, and the amount of time that it takes to recuperate from it is is time better spent doing fun, creative shit like I would rather get up early in a, on a morning and, and if I'm going to get wired on something, I'll drink black coffee and turn up music real loud and then do stuff that I enjoy doing without laying in bed until three in the afternoon with an ice pack over my face, you know? Exactly. And then, yeah, the, the uh, like I would just be lost in on Netflix or something and just laying down all day. You're right. And what's the point of that? I mean, we only, 
there's one there's one currency we can't get back it's time you know yeah. and so life is too short i always tell people life is so short make the best of it so well those are good words to close on if you would do one more thing for me though sort of look into your crystal ball for love and death corn and any other things that you might be doing over the course of let, let's say 18 months more or less how do you think everything is going to go for you I think it's going to be amazing. I think that we're going to get creative with, uh, with, with getting through the majority of the year if we can't play shows, you know, and uh, corn, like I said, corn's management and the band, or we're just throwing things back and forth. What if we did this? What if we did that? And we're, we're getting pretty close to locking in some cool ideas. So um, I'm hoping the crystal ball is showing me that, we can have some shows in the fall. You know, I know, I think there's going to be smaller shows happening. So I don't know if that means that corn goes out and does a club tour, just, just, just to get to the fans and give yeah. them something and to, for us to give us something to do. Or I don't know if, if it's something where, you know, the vaccines, you have to show proof that you got a vaccine. And I just, the big shows are, are, you know, it's common sense. will tell you that, getting 10,000 people into a place uh, doesn't look too promising for this year, but you never know, but uh, we'll see. And then Europe could be a different story. So I'm hoping the crystal ball is telling me that Europe is going to, you know, we can at least go over there and do some stuff. So we'll see, man. Well, you look and sound well, and that makes me feel real happy. As uh, you pointed out, you and I have, uh, Many years, <laughs> many years down the highways together. Uh, yeah. And I'm always glad to see you. And uh, you always make interesting music. And uh, I'm just very happy to see you so well. And uh, I wish you and yours all the best, uh, all the musicians you play with, but especially your family who are uh, uh, real sweet people too. Right on. Thank you very much, Lou. And uh, yeah, uh, blessings to you. And please come out and hang with us soon as we get near you. <laughs> I got to get some fresh guitar picks from you for my collection. So count, count on it. Hey, did I ever give you the big pick? No. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have some saved and I'm going to keep making them, but I have these picks. They're as big as your hand that I, oh, I dude. throw out. So yeah, no more tiny picks. I give away anymore. I give the big, but I only give like 10 a show or, you know, and I try to give them to people that won't, it, they won't end up on eBay. You know? Oh no, I, I part with nothing. I am, I am a degenerate collector of things. That, that was the other thing. Like why spend money on drugs and alcohol when I can spend it on indulging my hobbies? I would rather indulge my hobbies, you know? I mean, it's, that's, that's common sense tells you that too. It's like, look at the stupid stuff we waste. I mean, you know what it's about? It's about, growing older and becoming wiser, right? Because you know, we don't know this stuff. We, we're idiots when we're, you know, 25, 28 or whatever. We just do- I'll live like, forever. I can yeah. do anything. Yep. <laughs> what an asshole I was. Yep. <laughs> All right, on me being an asshole, we'll close out on that. Head, always great to see you. God bless. One asshole to another. Great to there see you. There you go. <laughs>